Hi, you mate. You know, you know that's one of my most hated people, don't you? Who's that? The tax man. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Are we started? Have we started then yet, Emma? Right. Well, I'll, uh, I'll edit the bits out. Yeah, yeah, no need, problem, so yeah. Shout. Right. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. It's me, Brian Cockrell, the Tackling Show. And I've got the best dart player of all time, ever been, ever will be, Phil the Power Taylor. Hello, Phil. Welcome to the show, mate. Hiya, Brian. Great to talk to you, fella. Uh, can I just ask you, Phil, when was the first time you threw a dart? The first time I would have been young because we lived in a little terraced house in Tunstall, a place called Tunstall in Stoke on Trent. Right. And we had no uh, we had no TV in them days. So I'd have probably been probably three or four year old, to be honest with you. Because everything was based around indoor sports because there was no TVs. We didn't even have electric in the house. So yeah. that, that shows you how, how long ago that was. <laughs> yeah, we had a house with no electric and it was on there. On the year 19, up this way, and there was no electric. We just played out and along with the trees. We were uh, yeah. playing gun with machine guns, you know, but they weren't real. They were just pieces of wood. real machine guns. Yeah, <laughs> later on in life, allegedly, they had them. <laughs> the, um, I can remember, remember the toilet in the back of the yard. Yeah. And I can remember the sink in the yard as well. In winter, my dad used to have to break the ice on the sink to, to have a wash before he went to work. I remember we used to have a tin bath when we lived in Darlington. It was on the wall. And we used to have to be, put the hot water in it. And uh, we'd all get in the bath. The family, the oldest fest. And then someone else would get in. You'd all share the same bath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But they were good days because we were out. We, there was never no kids really overweight in them days because they were always playing on the bikes or running about. And now the kids so, did it. Yeah. No PlayStation in them days, bro, was there? No, no. And so, Phil, when was the best time you thought... When, the, when was the first time you, you played for, for real darts? When, when was the first time you started? Remember, going back to the, sorry, go back to the terrace. Remember that the doors were never locked. And they say to yeah. my mother, how come you never locked the door? She says, because we've got nothing, Nick. Yeah. Nothing to, nothing <laughs> That's to pitch. Yeah. That's true, though, isn't it? I mean, yeah. and yeah. all the neighbours used to help each other out. Like, if I was ill, yes, me or my mother was ill, the, one of the neighbours would look after me. One of the neighbours had cut my dad's sandwiches up. We call it snapping in Stoke-on-Trent, so... Yeah. One of them would do my dad's snapping for work. Another one would cook my dad's tea. That that kind of thing. You know, they were proper communal people. Their neighbourhoods were brilliant in them days. Yeah. Whereas now, I don't even know who my neighbours are. I know, I know the first name, but I don't really know them. It's ever so strange now. Well, years ago, you'd go knock on a door with a bit of sugar, wouldn't you? Or a bit of, a bit of sugar or a bit of milk. You'd anything. Have... Yeah. I remember my mother sending me the shop and everything was on credit. Can you yeah. put it on the, Can you put it on, the, on my mum's tick? You know what I mean? Put it on tick. Yeah. And then every Friday, when my dad got paid, she paid it off. Yeah. Well, we, we used to go, me and my mother yeah. used to go collect copper wire off the off the tips and everything. Yeah. Around you had the fields. to live. You had to live. Everyone had to do it. Well, my mum, mum and dad's, well, my dad's wages only lasted till Thursday. So for, for Friday, before he got paid, we used to go and collect copper wire, burn the plastic off, and then go and wait in. Yeah. And make a couple of shilling light ready for the ready for food on the Friday. I've been, I've, I've been on a few roofs, hit, pinching the lead. <laughs> myself. Have you? <laughs> yeah, so when Can't you do that, that no more, when, when I was talking to you before, you were um you were saying there was you and another guy doing really well in the dash, but um the company company give you a sponsorship or something you were saying. Could you just let the folks know? Yeah, the, the, I'll tell you the fella, Eric Eric had it the when he had dartitis. Him and Maureen were together, they're Maureen Flowers, and he wanted to go and sponsor somebody. So they had two people in mind, they had me. Because right. I was a little cocky. I was cocky like him and a bit aggressive towards people because I wanted Wincy. I wanted to earn the money. And then also there was a fellow named Dennis Heckling from Yorkshire. He was a good little player as well, Dennis was. But me being a local lad, I think it swung swung it for me. So Eric, he sponsored me roughly, I'd say, about £10,000 right. to travel the world, you know, from America to Canada, Finland, Denmark, Sweden. I mean, it was it was great. I mean, I remember taking loads of photographs. The first aeroplane I've ever been on, the first hotel I've ever stayed in, yeah. Good. was it when I played in the county. I thought I can get used to this. When was the first uh, one? Well, it, it was always on condition that I paid him back, which was the All best right. thing he ever did. Yeah. yeah. So Where if he walked in the room yeah. and I was sitting down talking, right? I got it. He'd give me a rollicking. He'd say, "What are you sitting with them lot for? They're not your mates. Get you home." And he'd say it in front of everybody as well. He was so bloody. Um, Honest, if you know what I mean, he'd say, "Listen, Taylor, you owe me seven thousand four hundred quid." What are you doing sitting down there? I say, Eric, I've been practicing for two hours. Shut up! 
Never yeah. mind, shut up, get on that practice board. So even even when he when he wasn't sponsoring me, if he walked in the room, I'd get up, and start practicing. Right, right. Because he'd give me he'd give me that dirty look. What are you doing sitting down there? What are you doing talking to that lot? Because he never thought the players were friends. You know, he thought yeah. they're all enemies. So you've got to get yourself right. You think he think you think he was right there? Hundred percent. Yeah. Hundred percent. I always said, if you want the England football team to start winning, put out Eric as manager because he'll yeah. motivate you. Trust me. Yeah. He can also be the nicest fellow you've ever met in your life as well. Right. Yeah. I used to call him Jekyll and Eric. Jekyll and Eric. <laughs> I did because I used to say to him, which one are you now, Jekyll or Eric? You go, I'm Eric now. I'll be I'll be Jekyll at ten o'clock on about about six pints. Yeah. <laughs> did you? Um, what was the first competition you went? You won. The first one, there used to be a dart magazine called Dart World, and they used to advertise counties did where you could enter, you could pay something like ten pounds and enter tournaments or five in them days. Like the the first one was the Derbyshire Open, right? And it was it was five hundred pound for the winner. My dad drove me, he paid me entry fee. My dad did. He drove me there. It was only about an hour's drive for me, and I won it. And sure. I can remember they paid me. They paid you in cash in them days. Right. And I went looking for the the organiser. I said, where's the organiser, please? He says, why? What's up? I said, I, I need a quick word with him. He says, he's in the office there, and it's like, a, I think it was like a school. So yeah. I've gone in there. I said, can I have a word with you, mate? He paid me in £50 notes. Right. See, so he got ten fifty pounds notes. And I said, what's this? This you've given me here. He says, what are you on about? I said, this here, what's this? I was going to jump over the table and grab him. He says, that's your money. That's your, that's, I said, that, that's not money. I've never seen that. What's that? I said, you can buy a Terry's house in Basel for 50 quid. <laughs> so uh, he says, honestly, he was laughing. He says, that's legal tender. We had never seen, my dad had never even seen a 50 pound note. No, no. So uh, that was the first one. I think the second one was Lincolnshire. It's, um, what's it called? Near Botlines. I can't think what you call it. Skegness. And yeah. that was, I think that was 750 pound, I think. Right. So it was fantastic. When I was working and earning like £70 a week, I was entering these little tournaments and winning 500 And what we used to do, because I had a little Terry Stouse in Bursland and in Blake Street in Bursland, I paid 7500 for it. So right. but we hadn't got anything. Everything was second-hand given to us. Like we had the old army blankets and the coats on the bed and stuff like that. So <laughs> my first wife, I said to her, what do we need now? She said, what we could do with some saucepans, some new saucepans. So I looked at the prize money and thought, if I get to the last eight, I can buy the saucepans. <laughs> so and that's how I did it. So, so it was, I was always motivating myself to, to earn money. Yeah, I understand that, yeah. So I get, to the, I get to the semi-final, I think, right, I can buy them new towels now she's after as well. And then the next tournament, I say, what do we need now? We need carpets, uh, duvets, duvets on the bed. I thought I'd won the lottery. <laughs> Seriously, it was brilliant to have a duvet instead of having like 10 blankets on your bed because we had no central eating and then the windows were, were rubbish, you know, drafty. Yeah. And then uh, I remember having a shower from British Gas. I'd, I'd got something like £550 at the bank and this shower was about 480 quid. So I said, come on, we'll have a shower because I kept having baths all the time and getting colds, you know, getting yeah. uh, chills on me. So I had a shower, and everyone in the street wanted to come and look at my shower. Oh, my God. It was a power, it was called the power shower, so you could, you could fire it at the oh, kids. Like it oh, you, you named the power. <laughs> I know, yeah. Yeah, it was brilliant, honestly. Yeah. So I was going through the house, and then eventually I thought, well, I'm going to try and earn enough money now to buy the house or buy another house, and that's how I did it. I just kept pushing forward. Right. And I was always one for practice, practice, practice. So when Eric sponsored me, the, the first one was a, a place called Moncton in Canada. And we went, we went about five days early, we practiced together and I ended up winning it. Right. Which that then put me into the world championships, last place. Right. Um, and, and then the rest is history, really. I, I went there, I won that. I beat Bob Anderson in the final. That mm -hmm. put me into world championships and I won that one. I beat Eric in the final. And, and after that then, I think the first year, I think I entered something like 50 competitions and won. I think I won 48 of them. So I was picking money up every week. I think you won brilliant like There was 13 world titles you won in a row. No, no, the world titles in a row. Yeah. Eight world champ yeah. eight, eight, the world yeah. title, eight years on the trot. Right. But you were ninety five to two thousand and something. You ranked number one. Two thousand and three. Ranked. And then I lost in the final the year after, which I, I should have won me. I, I threw it away. But it was a lot of pressure off me, Brian. There was a lot, a lot of pressure off me. 
a lot of jealousy, a lot of backbiting. You know what I mean? It was it was getting to me a little bit. I've been always relieved then to to lose it. Have you noticed then, the more successful you get though, Phil? Even family members get jealousy, don't they? The more money you make and you're better successful. People seem to get the screen streaking them, don't they? Yeah, good. Yeah. I, do like that, what, though, I don't even know you and they call you. <laughs> the best thing Eddie Bristol ever said to me, you know, Bri, he says, when the players are not speaking to you, that means you're good. Yeah. He says, and then all of a sudden, he said, if they start talking to you and start offering you buy you a drink, that means you're playing crap. And I remember I'd lost, I'd lost in a few tournaments, and then all of a sudden, all the players are talking to me. It dawned on me. Yeah, he's right. Hey up, he's right. Hey up, you're being friendly. You're being friendly. You're being friendly. That means I'm no good. Yeah. So I got back on the practice board, reinvented myself because I'm always pushing forward all the time. Yeah. And uh, made sure I got back to the top again. And it was a fella named Peter Manley because I used to take the dartboard off the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You get, get, get the players. Yeah, he's tiny. It. Yeah, that's right. Give it a young, young kid in the audience. See? I know, I remember that. Always. And he, 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 he did it on me. He beat me, he took the dartboard down off the wall. I thought, you little son. Yeah. That'll never happen again. And that was the best. And after that, he did that. And I won over a million pounds that year in prize money. And I remember saying to Peter Manley, that's the Peter Manley million that is. You were actually, it was actually brilliant, like. You were actually quicker than um, um, Usain Bolt to get into that dartboard <laughs> to take off <laughs> the giant head. Yeah, what was the but best? you know what? Over the years, yes, over the years, Bri, I've had people tap me on the shoulder at exhibitions, let's yeah. say Middlesbrough or Newcastle, whatever. And as I've turned around, there's a big lad standing there like yourself. And I said, Hello, can you remember me, Phil? No, who are you? You said that I was that little lad you bought on stage. I was only nine then. Yeah. I'm being you're kidding. Brilliant. About six foot four now. Yeah, I went, brilliant. Wow, how good's that? You know, then the little memories like that are great, great yeah, in my brilliant. life. Now I'm retired anyway. What was the uh, was the best title uh, the, the best one you won? The first one, I was a bit choked up, be quite honest with you. I won it, but I was a bit choked up because I thought I've done everything. I've, I've reached my dreams now and I've done everything and I can now go and earn a living for the rest of my life, whereas before you're always working, week, you know, living week to week. Yeah. Um, but my, my favourite one, I think, was matching Eric. My first one's always going to be the best, matching Eric and then beating Eric's record. That was probably my favourite. And then obviously the prize money came in when it was getting up to 200, 300,000 pounds. It's mad. It's crazy money, you know. And then, then, the, then, then you can look after your parents. Unfortunately, my parents died at the wrong time, really, yeah. when I started earning the proper money. Yeah. But uh, we've done okay, though. What do you think when they stopped the drinking on the stage? Do you think it was better, or some players were better drinking? Were <laughs> jockey never, was good. I mean, we used to play in the pubs and clubs. Yes, I started playing in a little uh, working men's club at Bearsham Central, right by Port Vale Football Ground. It is, and I used to play on a Tuesday with my dad. He just said, "Come on, come out," because I never went out. Really, I was working all the time because with having children. Yeah, and uh, started playing on a Tuesday and started beating the best players around. And I'm thinking, I'm actually good at this. I knew I was good at darts, but I wanted to be, I went boxing, football, golf, snooker, but I was average, really, you know, not very good. So, but darts, I could just win. And I really honestly only did it for her money. That's the only reason I did it. I mean, trophies are great, but you can't eat trophies. No. So I thought, you know, the money money you can use for food, for the kids and everything. And, and you know, but shoes on the feet I suppose so that was my main reason if I didn't earn money with it I wouldn't have played I wouldn't have played long I'll speak that way what, what, what was the toughest opponent you had? Um, the toughest would have been Dennis Priestley right because he was good but very slow right so when he when Dennis used to be playing you'd be thinking about shall I go on holiday next week but between yeah. his throw <laughs> to be thinking yeah. have, have I paid my tax this week <laughs> have I got all oh, the VATs next month and all of a sudden it's your go so your mind would start wandering. Yeah. Whereas, and then you have quick players where they speed in you up. That gets you gets you out of breath a little bit because it's your go. By the time you walk back, it's your go. You know they go bump, 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 dead fast. You I think remember, slow down a little bit. I remember later. So you have to you have to get experienced on this. Right. Yes. So yeah. During Dennis's throw, what I used to do was take a longer walk behind. Right. So I'd walk to the drinks table, turn round, and come back again. So it was next to like five or six seconds. Walking yeah. around in a circle, and that gave that then it was my go. So that's the way I, you know, I, I got over that. Technology actually doing something, so you're not thinking yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do something so that you don't think about that. So you're thinking about something else, and not being on holiday or not buying a, you know, new house or whatever. 
Who was the most friendliest you probably had? It was, it was Jockey Wilson, you said. Jockey was my pal. Yeah. Loved Jockey to bits. We used to play pairs together. I've had some really, really good times with Jockey. He made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, but he was another one. He was like a bottle of pop. Right. You know, if somebody says the wrong thing, he was, he was, and he was only small, but by heck, you try grabbing when he kicked off. He was like a little bulldog. Yeah. Um, but a great company to be with again. Yeah. Love Jockey. Uh, got on with most of them, really, but a lot of them were associates. You know, like Keith Dallas is a good friend, but yeah. we're more associates. You know what I mean? We wouldn't go out drinking together. Right. Stuff like that, the odd time. But we, we all live in different places, really. Yeah. But it was more it was more friendlier when we I was with the BDO than when I got with the PDC because right. there wasn't as much money in it then. Right. And we used to all pool together as well. So two or three people say say me and you were rooming together. I said, shall we split split this weekend, Bryce? So you were a good player, I'm a good player. So if I'd in two thousand and you'd in three thousand, we had two and a half thousand each. Right. And that's how we used to do it in them days. Have you ever, have you ever got mixed up with the darts when you've got knowing you're adding the the dark board of what you what you going for every week. <laughs> <laughs> was that on the drinking days or was that not the drinking days? Yeah, both. Both. But some I used to actually, do it on purpose. Some players were actually better when they drank. <laughs> I know, I know. They were, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, it, you do need a couple of drinks. I'll be quite honest with you. Especially, you know, it's, it's a, you're on your own up there. You're in front of thousands of people. You, you're aiming for a tiny little target. Yeah. So a little nerve settler doesn't do you any harm. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. yeah. But uh, some of the older players did did over and old like. I'll be honest. One of my mates played darts, and I super glue. He said to me, Brian, why did you super glue my dart? I said, you just can't let it go, can you? <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard of that thing, Phil, where dart players can't let go of the dart? Dartitis, yeah, yeah. You no, know yeah. it's called. It's in a lot of sports, that does. Is it? it? Happens in snooker, it happens in golf, it happens in darts. Yeah, it's just pressure, I think. Just right. pressure, pressure, pressure. It's all it is. Yeah. But, but you have to, again, you have to figure out a way of getting over it. You can. Right. There was a fella once played for Wales. He's died now, bless him. But he got dartitis. So he learned to play left handed. And, and qualify for Wales, play for his country left-handed as well. That's unbelievable. Brilliant. I couldn't, mm. couldn't make that up. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think Leighton Reese was the best uh, Welsh player ever, wasn't he? He was a lovely style of Leighton. Great yeah. style, proper gentleman. Yes. Really, you know, no, no uh, thinking with Leighton. He used to come, when I had my pub, he used to come to the pub. Yes. Because uh, he used to have a, a tournament at Trenton Gardens called the Gold Cup. From all all the different county players were qualified. So when I had a pub, they used to all come my pub on a Friday night, and have a right. Oh mate, I've I've had some right good times with them. But Leighton was always the one. After come on now, last orders. I want a kebab. I need a kebab. He says, send me get me a kebab. So I just have to take him get a kebab because I wasn't drinking. See, but, uh, yeah, it was good like that, Leighton. I remember his darts were huge. When he threw it, he thought you're not going to get three darts in there the size of them. I think the one he did. Yeah, I'll tell you. And Alan Evans was another player. He, I don't know if you remember yeah. Alan Evans. He's passed away now. I'd like that. But they, he was a brilliant player, Alan. He, yeah. he, if anybody like myself had got old to Alan and managed him, got him, he'd have been world champion multiple times, he would. Yeah, so 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 Eric, was he... He's the one who gave the inspiration. Did he give you any more tips what um, other players can learn off you? Yeah, you can't really give anybody tips. You can motivate them. Right, is that it motivation? It's not like boxing, or you can you can devise something to make the practicing because practicing is boring, you know, doing the same thing over and over and over, walking there, walking back. But if you can do different practice regimes and do different times of the day as well, because darts isn't all about one time, see. Like right. we play a players' championship, you start at 12 in the morning. So you're up about seven for breakfast, get back to your hotel room. Shower, change, then get down to the venue. I used to like be there two hours early to warm up. So you're there at 10 o'clock in the morning. And then the week after, I'll be playing, say, at the World Match Play, and I might not be on until 10 o'clock at night. Right. So it's a complete. So you spent a lot of time. This lockdown for me has been simple because that's been my life for years. Yeah, yeah. Sitting in hotel rooms. I'm going to ask you about the, uh, the nine data you did twice in a row. How did you do it? <laughs> Oh, during the world, during the, the uh, final, yeah. The, uh, what was it? Premier League. Do you know what, Brian? I'm hopeless. Yeah, I, I mean, I was watching. Bob who looks after me. He's ten times better than me. He tells me all my stats. I'm the worst one to ask, honestly, because I played in that many tournaments. Yeah. But that that nine dart, it, it got cancelled the night before because all the electric went out at Wembley Conference Centre, and then John McDonald, bless his heart, they had something like I don't know seven thousand people, eight thousand people outside, ready to kill somebody. 
And he went out and tell him it's off, come back tomorrow. But he did it like, you know, and then uh, that was when I clicked. It just come together. Right. Um, but it was a tough game. You always do, you know, you always have like a boxer, love, have his best fight is when you've got a good opponent against oh. you as well. If it's a walkover, it's rubbish, really. But that that game was was fantastic. I only won something like eleven nine or ten eight or ten nine or something like that. It was yeah. a really close match, so the nine daughters didn't mean anything really. Right, but, right. But um, probably probably the best game I've ever had in my career. Yeah, it was great. The average was unbelievable, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. So yeah. So what 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 do you do now then, Phil? What you what you do to keep yourself busy now? What I've been doing, I'm doing yep. stuff for online betting companies. I'm still sponsored by Target, my sponsors. I'm doing a bit with Betbull. I've just done some videos now. There's my shirt with Betbull on it. Um, loads of things, really. I've got a lot of properties, which I rent out. So last week, I was putting new soffits, uh, facial board, guttering up. <laughs> I was I I mind occupied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then yesterday, I was sanding some woodwork down and painting it. And I've done the sheds. I've got a nice new shed on one of them, so I've done that in Seekings, I think, called Seekings, uh, which I'll re- I'll do another coat tomorrow. Is that, is that, that, that might be never asleep when we come. <laughs> and then I'm getting myself ready, Bri, for that new tournament called the World Seniors, which is in February. Oh, right. right, that'll be good. So I'm going to start properly maybe at the end of this month, beginning of August, I'll start practising, because it, it's otherwise it's too early. So it's February, I think it's February the 2nd, at the Circus Tavern, and right. in Perthley. How is your dad these days? Do you know what? I don't know, because I've not thrown a dart for about three months. Right. <laughs> but it'll take me, me my dartboard, actually, Bri, if you have a look. It's on my living room wall. Right. So, uh, Mrs. has allowed me to put it up, which is unusual. <laughs> and then uh, I shall start, and there's my hockey on the floor. Yeah. Which I push the settee over. <laughs> you must trip over that. So uh, I'll start <laughs> properly on. I'll go down to my sponsors. I've got some new darts and a new shirt coming out. I'm uh, I'm going to see them on Monday, do some promotion work. So I'll go, go down to Harlow on Monday, and then I'll start properly when I get back. Yeah, brilliant. So who's your favourite player of all time then? I had a few really. Right. I, I like jockey. Yeah. Eric, I loved Eric. Confidence. So it, with me, when I first started, I had a mixture. So I, lo- I love John Lowe's style. I thought he was a fantastic player to watch. I loved Eric's uh, will to win. Right. Also liked Jockey because he was a character. Big Cliff. I used to like Big Cliff Lazarenko. I yeah. loved his style as well. You know, you've got to love his style. I'm all, I always knew that if you want to be good at whatever you do, you've got to have a style, a good style. The players that have got a strange, bit of a strange style will always, always win something, but they will never be consistent. Right. You know, you've got to have that right style. You'll see it in boxing the same. You know, that you'll you'll see the style of somebody like Muhammad Ali or Floyd Mayweather. Say, you yeah. know, you know they and um, Paki Manny Pacquiao. You yeah. know he's gonna they are gonna do well because they've got that good style. Yeah. So, um, what was your favorite? Um, what was your favorite um, tournament? Like, well, title tournament was the one when you did the two nine darts, as you say. Well, that was the, that was uh, the Premier League, and that was that right. was a strange tournament. That was because that was over that was over like fifteen weeks. Right, right. So you had to play well every week to qualify, and then when you got down to the semi final, it was played at the O2 at the time. So then you had you had semi final and a final. So it was over fifteen weeks. So that was a that was a tough one. The World Championships is always going to be the creme de la creme. Yeah, but the, the my favourite was Blackpool, the Winter Guardians. I just love Blackpool for some reason or other, and it was summer. Like the World Championships is in in January, so it's cold. You can't go out during the day. But well, when Blackpool, I, was... I got a nice holiday home, on, and, and a camp on a campsite, beautiful, uh, with a big veranda, sitting looking at a lake with fountains and everything else. So I absolutely loved it up there. Well, we... That was my favourite one because it was summer and you could go sit outside. We 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 me never from Red Car, you see. So it used to be there every year. The I'm dad, a red car. Yeah, the dad used to be there. The world title every year at the uh, the court and ball. I used to stay in a pub there for Gary Pursley. I used to wait for for your brewery. Oh, I've Gary Pursley, yeah, and Wayne Pursley. Yeah, yeah, you know Gary. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I used to put me in a pub just off the town centre, and they had like an accommodation upstairs. Mermaid. Was it the mermaid? Could be. Could yeah, be. Yeah, the mermaid. I come yeah. out and do a come out the front door, do a left, and you go down towards the town centre. Yeah, to Mermaid. And then do yeah. a right, and you'd head towards the coast, I think. 
Yeah, that's I right. I stay there all the time. Park Hotel. Is it the Park Hotel? Could be. Could yeah, be. I, think I can't remember the name of it. I'll find it and I'll text you, Brian. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll text Gary after this. Well, I'll have, to let you go I don't, I'll have to let you go because you're busy and Bob will go mad if I don't let you go. So, <laughs> anything you're right to stay. Yeah? You're oh, right you're right. Right. Brilliant, brilliant. <laughs> I just don't want Bob on my case. You know what he's like. <laughs> oh, he's all right. Don't worry about him. I fed him anyway. He's all right. Now he's asleep. I'll come back in 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. So, I used um, to call in, see Chubby as well. You know, Roy. Roy yeah, I know Roy. Yeah, I know him very well. I used yeah. to pop in, see him on the way past. He was, he was good company. Yeah. I enjoyed Roy. Yeah, he's funny. It's just like us, just for like, like a lot of the council estate, it hasn't changed. The money hasn't changed him. You are, you haven't changed the money. You just the same. No. Have, you ever, have, you, ever, have yeah. you ever read Roy's book, right? I've read, read a couple of them, yeah. Good, very, very good. Yeah. He had a tough upbringing, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. I'll tell you, sorry. He, he, watching, he, actually, he actually hit a lad with a machete in Redka years ago, about thirty-five years ago, and he was up. He, he did it with it, and he, twelve stitches he got. And me and my friend got him £50 to stitch the lad off Chubby to drop the charges. Oh, dear. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's well known. Everyone knows the story, but allegedly again. Yeah, so what... What, I used to, um, what about used the to We used to stay in a lovely hotel on a golf course called De Vere. Right. And I used, to, I used to nick his room because Chubby had his own, but like a, a suite there, I used to nick it. I used to book it up knowing he'd, <laughs> he'd go mad. He used to come down to the breakfast room and give me a tea. Hey, Taylor, you nicked my room again, do you have? Sorry, Roy. <laughs> I'll have to say it tell your grandson to leave your Maltesers alone. I know. He's there <laughs> now, Matthew is. Oi. Brian says, leave my Maltesers alone. Hiya, son. Yeah, how's the missus? He's mis- always nicking me. To- I don't get any chocolate now. <laughs> how's the missus? She's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's great. Yeah, she's looking after the grandson today. Right. Little Carter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because mm-hmm. his mum's a care worker, so once a week right. we have him back. You know, he's a good lad. Yeah, so he's, he's down in his own house today. Yeah, the thing, the thing about you is, I think you won so many titles because you're always smiling. I say to people, if you smile and you're happy, your mind's happy, your mindset's happy. When you're sitting, miserable, yeah, you're not under pressure. Yeah, you're not under pressure. But it was always with me, Bryce. I always lost when I didn't prepare properly. Right. I used to phone my sponsor and say I'm ever so sorry, and they go, "What for?" Because I, I didn't prepare properly, and that's not fa- that's not fair on you because they have to earn money to pay you. Right, you know, which they always did. Don't get me wrong, but I didn't like it. You know, if I was tired, I've been travelling too much, and I didn't practice properly. I used, I used to hate it, so I always made sure I got me right practicing. You've you got to do. You've got to prepare proper. I remember seeing you used to practice at your mum's every day, didn't you? Oh, every day. Every day, yeah. But I'd also practice at like eleven o'clock at night because I knew you wouldn't be practicing at eleven o'clock at night. Right. New yeah. Year's Eve, when I'm a little telly stouts because the dartboard was the side of the bed. I used to go up and hit something like five one eighties before I went to sleep. So it started at twelve o'clock, which is the new year. Yeah, I've got it at five one eighties then. Sometimes I could do it in half an hour. Sometimes it take me two hours. Right. And um, I knew then I was the first person to hit five one eighties in the new year because <laughs> I knew Eric used to do two. So I thought I'll double yours and do five. So I, I, I'm one up on you. Yeah, that's great. Uh, what was going to say? So. What, what, what are you doing for the future then? Just doing what you're doing now because you seem to be happy and everything's yeah. fine. The, the, the exhibition circuit's starting up again because obviously lockdown's easing, hopefully, anyway. Um, I've got four, four person, but I've just told I've got four this year. And then next year, it'll be personal appearances, but I'm not doing as many now, probably 10 a year at the most. And then we've got them tournaments coming up where we're doing the Legends thing, you know? Right. So... And I think it'll take off. The, the, the interest in it's been fantastic, you know, because yeah. all the most of the players in it, everybody that you know, you know, today now, like Bob says, why didn't you have a word with the, your betting company so you can have a gamble on the darts? Now you're not playing. Yeah. I said, but I don't know half the players. I yeah. don't know who these are anymore. Like 128 players, I probably know 30 of them. So I might be no good at gambling on darts anyway. I'm better gambling yeah. on football. I think the old school, like the jockeys and yourselves and the Eric Bristol, all the other character in them. Yeah, yeah. Jo- John Lowe's yeah. playing in February. Yeah. yeah, jockey was a proper, proper character. He yeah. was, he was brilliant. Um, oh, I could tell you some stories, but I'll have to tell you when I'm, when I see you. Yeah, when he, <laughs> when you come to see us. <laughs> Def- I'm definitely coming up. Yeah, now I've got a bit of time off. I'll definitely come up, honest to God, in the next couple of weeks because one of my best mates is from Barney Castle. Right. You, you, you know Starford Prison? No. 
one of them I haven't been in. One. You haven't been, one haven't been in. <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. No. It's the Young Defenders <laughs> one. It's, uh, it's Barnet Castle, so I'm going to see Colin, my mate. I haven't seen him for about two or three years right. with lockdown and everything. And then I'll pop up and see if that's okay. What do you think about our dark player, Glenn Durant? Does it? Love him. Love yeah. him. Very, 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 very honest. Love the lad. Yeah. Uh, struggling a little bit at the minute. Yeah. You know, he's got to get his head right. If his head's right, you're in trouble. He's a very good mm. player as well. Nice uh, man. But at the minute, he's he's just struggling a little bit. Since this COVID's knocked him sideways. Right. He hasn't been the same since. But, right. um, you know, he's experienced. When when he, when he I talk to him, he says, oh, don't mention darts, Phil. I said, I'm not, not interested in darts. I've retired. <laughs> you know, it's up to you. I said, you'll get ready when you get ready yourself. I can't, yeah. you know, lead a horse to water and make you drink type of thing. No. I said, you'll do it when you're ready. But I'll, I'll pop in see Glenn when I'm up because I do like Glenn. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him here. We'll come come see us, can't you? Both of you. Definitely. We'll have a drink. All his missus, lager, lager. <laughs> <laughs> Likes a drink. You're brilliant. Oh, definitely. You're... Honest to God, I'll be up. Well, okay, well, thanks for being on the show today. I can't believe you've been here. You're my favourite player man. of all time. You know You're my favourite right, sportsman right. of all time. You're a great bloke, and we love you. We love right, you, family, and everything. See you a bit, buddy. Okay, say so God bless. Bye now. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. 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 <laughs>